A slider is a very useful pattern in web development because it's an interactive way of presenting content. You can use it for image galleries, product showcases, or even blog entries. It's a very versatile component. Now, there are several ways of creating a slider, and most of them are based on JavaScript, but there are also CSS-only solutions available which are very interesting. However, in this short course, we're going to keep things simple and we're going to have a look at one of the easiest to use sliders out there called Swiper. This is uh, totally free, but also super powerful. It supports touch gestures on mobile. It's library agnostic, which means it works with pure vanilla JavaScript. It has lazy loading, RTL support, 3D effects, and a whole bunch of other cool things. Oh, and it's also responsive. Now, in this course, we're going to use Swiper to create two sliders for a simple web page. One is a simple fade slider that uh, showcases some images, and the other is a bit more complex. We're going to add custom navigation and pagination, some extra content in the slides, support for keyboard navigation, and a few other things. But hey, if we're just meeting, my name is Adi Purdila. I'm a web designer slash developer. And my goal with these videos is to help you become a better web designer or developer. Now, before we start this course, I want to quickly tell you about a resource that I'm using a lot, and that is Envato Elements. Here, uh, you can find tons of useful resources like fonts, icons, UI kits, WordPress themes, music, uh, stock photos and videos, illustrations, and much more. For creatives like me, this is an amazing resource because all the assets have simple commercial licensing and you're not bound to any contract. Therefore, you can cancel whenever you want. So, if you're interested, check out the link in the video description. With that said, let's get the ball rolling and create some sliders. But first things first, let's see what we have to work with. Let's take a quick look at the state of the project so far and see what we need to add to it. And by the way, if you want to follow along and work alongside me, uh, you can do so by downloading uh, the course files using the link in the uh, video description. Uh, they're the exact same files that I'll be working on. So let's get started. If you were to download the course files, uh, you'll get a folder that's called Course Files Swiper JS Slider, which contains the following uh, CSS, IMG, and JS folders, an index.html, and a Spain.fig file. This is a Figma file that contains the design that's the basis for uh, for our web page. So let me quickly show you that uh, design. It's a very simple page. Uh, with just an intro here, some information about Spain. Uh, this is the first slider that we need to create. Uh, this is another uh, section with uh, information about Spain. And this is the second slider that, uh, that we'll be creating. Now, I went ahead and coded most of the page, as you can see here, uh, apart from the sliders. So where the first slider needs to be, we just have a placeholder text, and the same goes for uh, for the second one. So let's actually have a quick look at what uh, these sliders are all about. Uh, this is a fade slider. It's a very simple one, and its purpose is just to switch uh, between certain full width images using a fade effect. And we also have uh, a very simple pagination here at the bottom. Now the second slider is a bit more complex because we're showing the main image here and also previews of the previous and next image on the sides. Uh, we also have some additional uh, content right here at the bottom of each image. We have this um, box that contains a location icon and the actual location of, uh, of that photo. Uh, we also have previous or next and previous uh, navigation with these two buttons, and also a custom pagination here on the bottom that looks something like this. So that's the second slider. In terms of the code that I've written so far, it's just 
you know, standard HTML. Uh, I'm loading uh, a reset file in the form of modern normalize. I'm also loading the CSS for a swiper. We'll have a look at that uh, very soon. I'm also loading two Google fonts, EB Garamond and Montserrat. And also I'm loading the main CSS file, which is called app.css. So I will only go over the HTML here. You can do that uh, on your own. I'm just gonna focus on the HTML for the sliders. Uh, in the CSS folder, we have the app CSS file, which contains all the CSS that I've written for the project so far. And of course, this will be a responsive web page as well. And the image folder contains all the images that will be used in the design. We have some SVGs, but also some JPEGs of the various um, photos that I found of Spain. These are all taken from Unsplash. Finally, in the JS folder, uh, we have the JavaScript, or we will have the JavaScript code that's going to allow us to power up the uh, Swiper library. So that's what we need to do in this course, basically. Uh, we need to create slider number one, this one, and slider number two. All right, so now that we're caught up with the project and we know what we need to do, let's go ahead and create the first slider. That's coming up. So let's jump straight in here. The first thing we need to do is load the necessary swiper files. There are two of them. There's a CSS file, that's for the styles, and a JavaScript file that uh, takes care of all the functionality of the slider. Now, for Swiper, because this is library agnostic, which means it runs purely on uh, JavaScript, uh, we don't need to load any external library, just the Swiper files. And to get started, you would go to the website, swiperjs.com, you go to get started. And here, uh, to keep things simple, we're going to use a CDN. So we need to load two files, this for the CSS and this for the JavaScript. Now, in my HTML file, I already loaded these. The CSS is right here in the head of the document. And of course, I'm loading the minified version. And then the JavaScript is placed all the way down here before the end of the body tag. As you can see, I placed it uh, in a script tag, just like uh, we can see here on the official website. Additionally, of course, I'm also loading the app.js where I'm gonna write my own JavaScript and the app CSS, uh, a file that I'm gonna use to write my CSS, my style sheet. So then, once we've loaded um, Swiper, let's go ahead and write the markup for our first slider. And if we take a closer look at Figma, this is the fade slider that we'll create in this lesson. It's a simple one. It shows full width images that fade on transition, right? And we also have a, a very simple pagination here. So how would we write the markup for this? Well, it's actually very simple. We're gonna start with a div class swiper. And I'm also gonna give this an ID of swiper one. Oops, swiper one. Okay. So let's go ahead and end the uh, swiper there. And then inside, we need to create another div with a class of swiper wrapper. By the way, you don't have to write these comments uh, like I'm doing. Uh, I just got in the, uh, into the habit of doing this uh, so that the code is a little bit easier to read and I know what div ends where. So we have the swiper div, this holds everything. Then we have the swiper wrapper, and inside we're gonna add our slides. And each slide uh, content will be placed inside a div with a class of swiper slide. So we're gonna have swiper slide, and inside let's place our image. I'm gonna use a simple IMG tag, and I'm gonna point to uh, the images from my IMG folder. And for the alt text, I'm just gonna say Spain. Now I'm gonna place three uh, slides. So I'm just gonna uh, duplicate this section two more times. 
And here I'm gonna say Spain 2 and Spain 3. And then after the swiper wrapper ends, I'm gonna add a div with a class of swiper pagination. And uh, the library uses this uh, to place those uh, pagination bullets. Okay, so let's uh, save that and um, have a look in our website here. Okay, so we can uh, see the image and that's about it. Uh, nothing really happens. It doesn't change automatically because we haven't initialized the plugin. So let's go ahead and do that next. I'm gonna open my app.js file and I'm gonna start by saying new swiper. And now I need to target the element that contains my uh, my swiper markup, my slider markup. And that's why I gave this ID of swiper one. So we're gonna target that exactly. So swiper one. And then here's what we do. We can choose what effect we want in my case, I want to I want this to be faded and let's save and check it out. So let's do a quick refresh here. And now you'll see that when I'm dragging with my mouse, the image changes. This is uh, some default behavior, but these images are way, way, way too big. So let's write some CSS to fix that. So I'm gonna go to app CSS and all the way down here, I'm gonna create a new section for swiper. And I'm gonna say the following. First of all, let's take care of the images. So I'm gonna say swiper slide IMG. Uh, let's set a display to block and let's set their width to 100%. Uh, their height in our design here, they're 640 pixels. And we have a 16 pixel base font size, which means 40 rems should be equal to 640 pixels. Okay, so let's save. But now here's the problem. The images are the correct size, but some of them are squished, right? Because they're not following the exact aspect ratio of the original image. We can go around that by saying object cover, or sorry, object fit, we're gonna set the value to cover, right? So that fixes things very nicely for us. And object fit, cover will basically uh, display that image inside of its boundaries without distorting it, right? So without uh, distorting the width or the height, the image is displayed correctly and it will fit the entire size of, um, of its container basically. So object fit cover, very, very useful trick. Now, what about the pagination? As you can see here, we have uh, some very simple bullets that are 12 by 12. They're using this black color with 75% opacity. They're distance 12 pixels from one another. Uh, they're also distance 32 pixels from the bottom of the image. They're centered, of course. And the active uh, bullet has this, um, this orange color. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, we need to display them. We're gonna go back to the JavaScript and we're gonna say the following pagination. We're gonna pass in an object here. Uh, first, let's target the element that will be using that pagination. In my case, it's gonna be swiper one, swiper pagination, which is this div right here. And also I wanna make it clickable so I'm gonna set it to true. That means I want the, the script to allow me to click on these bullet points just like so. Uh, so we have them, they're working, but they don't look like we need them to. They don't look like uh, these in the design file. So let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, if we do a quick inspect, uh, on the code here, uh, you can see that each bullet has a, a class of swiper pagination bullet. This is generated by the script and there's no point in changing that, but we can target it in CSS. Uh, you can also see that the active bullet has the class of swiper pagination bullet active. So let's close this and let's go back to our CSS and we'll say the following, swiper one, Swiper pagination, 
Uh, let's push it a little bit up so we have the necessary 32 pixels of distance. So I'm going to say bottom two rems. Okay, and that pushes it up nicely. I know this will work because this is absolutely positioned. Here you can see them a little bit better. So by using the bottom property, I can push them up to whatever distance I want. Next, let's target the actual bullet. So I'm going to say swiper one, swiper pagination bullet. Here we're going to say the following. Uh, let's change their opacity to one because by default they uh, they have a lower opacity. I want to change the background color to a variable that I defined, black 75. And I want to change the width to 12 pixels. That means 0.75 rems. Height, same thing. And also let's change the distance between them. So I'm going to say a margin, zero top and bottom. Left and right should be six pixels because in our design we have 12 pixel distance between. So we have six and six. So that means 0.5 rems or sorry, no, let's see, six divided by 16.375 like that. Okay, cool. So now we have the, the bullets just the way we want them. Now let's target the active bullet. So I'm going to simply copy this. I'm going to say bullet active. And here, all I'm going to do is change the background color to the variable of accent, which I defined right here. Okay, save. And there we go. That's a fully functioning slider. Now, there are a few things we can add to this to make it even better. And we'll do that from the JavaScript. First, we can make it autoplay. So I can say autoplay, and I can specify a delay of let's say 2500, that's milliseconds, so 2.5 seconds. And also I'm gonna add another uh, property here called disable on interaction. By default, this is true, but I'm gonna set it to false. Uh, basically, this prevents uh, the slider from disab disabling the autoplay on user interaction. Okay, so let's do a comma there. Let's do a quick refresh and you'll see that after two and a half seconds, it automatically changes the slide. Finally, we can add some quality of life um, properties here like lazy loading, true, and also we can loop it. So lazy loading basically will only load uh, the images when necessary, therefore saving up some uh, some bandwidth and looping makes sure that uh, once the slider reaches the end, it's going to go back to the first slide and it's just going to keep doing that over and over and over again. Now, if you're a bit confused about these properties, well, that's not really a problem. If you go to the swiper JS file under API, you can find all of these properties here, learn about them, see what they do, what kind of values you can add to them, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are also various demos that are made by the team at Swiper. So if you want a specific functionality, you can go in here and uh, see how it's made. You have various options for uh, uh, different platforms here. And if you click on either one, uh, you'll see code examples for that particular demo. See, just like this. But yeah, that's it. That's our first slider, fully functional fade slider. And we can also uh, do an inspect here. And when we resize this, you'll see that this is working just fine, even on mobile devices. However, uh, we could add something here in the CSS. We can say that on uh, smaller screens, I want the images to be a little less tall. So I can go in here into this uh, media query and I can say swiper slide IMG height 
will be 20 rems instead of 40. So now on uh, smaller screens, we have uh, an image that's 20 rems. And on bigger screens, we have an image that's 40 rems in height. All right, so that's one down, one to go. This uh, first slider was the easier, the more simpler one, right? But it gave us the opportunity to uh, learn exactly how to load the Swiper.js files and also how to correctly write the markup for the slider. Uh, the next one is a little bit more complex, so let's get to it. Let's begin by taking a closer look at the second slider we need to create. Just like the first one, we're showing images, but with a twist. We're showing not one, but three images. We're showing the main one, centered, and also previews of the previous and next image right here on the sides. Also, on top of the image, we can see a box with the location of that particular place that's displayed in the image. So let's start with that. Uh, here in my page, the slider two will go right here. And if we take a look at the um, HTML, uh, we can see that this will be placed inside a div with a class of container wide. And container wide uh, will simply set a, a bigger max width and a different padding than the original container. But that's not really uh, important right now. Uh, let's start with the markup. So just like before, we'll start with the div class swiper, and I'm going to give it an ID of swiper2. We're going to add a swiper wrapper, and then inside we'll place our slides. So we'll say swiper slide, and then we'll have the image, but of course uh, this additional content as well. Uh, for this, we can use a figure element where we'll place the image. So we'll say IMG slash, let's say Spain one. For the alt text, we can actually put the uh, location from that image. And for that extra content, we're gonna use a fig caption. And inside the fig caption, we're gonna have the uh, location icon, which I've uh, exported and can be found in the IMG folder. It's called icon location SVG. So I'll say uh, image source IMG icon location SVG and icon location for the alt text. And then right under that, I can put the text just like that. Now, it's simply a matter of repeating the process for the rest of the images just like that. So basically, every swiper slide has the figure element, which in turn has the main image. And then inside the fig caption, we have the icon and the, uh, the location. Okay, cool. So now if we take a closer look at our slider, of course, we can see some images, but uh, this currently is not working let's go ahead and initialize it. So in our JavaScript file, I'm going to say new swiper, and I'm going to pass in swiper2, and let's add some properties. We're going to say slides per view, and I'm going to set this to 1.5. Now, I'm doing this because I want to display it just like so, right, with uh, a preview of the previous and next image on either side. So I'm choosing to display one and a half slides. And I'm also going to say centered slides true. Okay, so now if we take a closer look, this is what we got. Right, it's already looking a lot better. Uh, let's close the gap between these by using space between, and I'm gonna set this to 24 because that's what I have in the design, save. Okay, we still have a big space here, but that's probably caused by the uh, the figure element having some uh, some extra margins. We'll, uh, we'll fix that in just a little bit. Let's see what else we can add in JavaScript for now. Uh, we can add the lazy loading, uh, we can add the looping, uh, what else? Uh, we can also add keyboard support. So keyboard, and we can pass in enabled true. That means 
I can now use my right and left arrows on my keyboard to navigate the slider. So now let's uh, turn our attention to the CSS part. So I'm going to open up my app CSS and let's see about uh, this, uh, this gap here. And let's also start displaying the, the fig caption, the, the location. So I'm going to say swiper slide figure, and I'm going to set a margin to zero. So that should, yeah, that should fix the, um, uh, the gap next, the uh, fig caption will be placed absolutely. So I'm going to set position relative to the uh, to the figure parent. And also I'm going to set overflow to hidden. And you'll see why in just a little bit. Next, let's go swiper slide fig caption. So let's worry about the uh, uh, the actual box that we need to that we need to do here. So taking a look at uh, at its properties here, we can see it's using uh, our full black color. It has eight points of spacing between the icon and the text, 32 pixels padding left and right, 16 top and bottom, and the text is white, and it's using Montserrat regular 17 font size 29 line height. So let's do that. We'll start by setting position absolute and setting the bottom to zero. Okay, let's change the text color to white. Let's set the font size 17. I'm going to set the font family. And I have a variable defined here as secondary font family. And that just uses uh, this one, Montserrat with a fallback to Helvetica and sans serif. And also line height, that's 29. Uh, let's add the background color of full black. Okay, so now we're starting to see something. Uh, this image is currently displayed too big because we set the style right here. So this affects all of the images, but we'll, uh, we'll get to that. For now, let's keep our focus on the fig caption. Uh, what else? Uh, let's set the display to flex so that the text and the icon sit next to each other. So display flex. And I'm going to set the uh, alignment to the center, right? So they're both displayed in the uh, center of the fig caption. Uh, let's also set a gap of 0.5 rems between the icon and text. And actually, let's do this. Let's uh, do swiper slide fig caption IMG. Let's, uh, let's fix that image because it's driving me crazy. Well, what I'm going to do is set the width uh, to auto, height to auto, and also the object fit, I'm going to set it to contain instead of cover because it was, um, uh, you know, inheriting the cover value from, uh, from the style written up here. So once we do this, it should all be fixed. Okay, now we can go back to the fig caption. So I set the gap uh, between the icon and the text. Uh, next, let's set a border radius. Uh, if you can see here, we only only have an eight pixel radius on the top side of the uh, box, right? So we can do that in CSS by setting uh, the values like this 0.5 rems, which is eight pixels, 0.5 rems, this equals uh, top left, top right, and then bottom right and bottom left, we'll uh, set these to zero. And what else? Let's add our padding. So we had one rem top bottom, two rems left and right, like so. And now let's center it in the middle of the image, right? So we'll say left 50%, like that. But now the left edge is at 50%. To move it exactly in the middle, we're going to do a quick trick here, transform, translate X, or actually, let's use translate 3D, minus 50%, uh, 0, 0, like that. And let's also add a nice transition. 
because I don't want to display uh, this fig caption on all the elements. I only want to display it on the active slide. Okay, so we can do a quick, uh, a nice effect for that. We can set it uh, translate Y to 100%. So it's outside of the bounds. This is where the overflow I used here comes into play. Well, actually, I don't think we need the overflow. So that's okay. We can just delete that. So by doing transform translate Y 100%, we're moving this uh, down 100% of its height. So we can essentially not see it. Let's also change the opacity to zero so we hide it completely. And let's add a nice transition, all properties, 0.3 seconds, ease in out. So let's save that. Okay. So now what we want to do is display that fig caption only on the active slide. So we say swiper slide active. This is the class that's uh, that's used by swiper. Uh, let's target fig caption. And we'll set the transform to translate 3D minus 50%, zero, zero. And also opacity to one. Okay, so now it looks like this. Right, it only uh, shows on the active slide, and it does that with a nice transition, sliding from the bottom and also changing its uh, its opacity at the same time. So that's pretty uh, pretty cool. All right, now let's move on to our custom uh, navigation. Right, if we take a look here, we have these two buttons that look like so. They have a cutoff in the shape of an arrow inside the circle. And their purpose is to help us navigate with our mouse cursor, right? We click on this element, it takes us to the next slide, we click on this uh, other element, this one, and it takes us to the previous slide. Now to make this happen, here's what we do. We right click this in Figma, we copy paste as SVG, we're not going to use images here we're going to use SVGs, right? Because it makes it a little bit easier for us to, uh, to customize. So uh, let's go back to our index.html. And after the end of uh, the swiper wrapper, we're going to add some custom code. So we're going to add a div with a class of swiper custom nav that basically will hold these two SVGs. So it will hold the SVG for the previous icon. And I'm going to give this an uh, ID of nav left. And also I'm going to remove the fill opacity from here. So it's 100% white. And then we'll go back and copy the SVG for the second element. And I'm going to paste this in. Same deal. Give it an ID of nav right this time and remove the fill opacity. All right, so now if we take a look at our code, uh, we can't really see these anywhere because they're kind of hidden uh, behind these slides. But using CSS, everything is possible. So let's start with swiper custom nav. Uh, we'll set a position absolute, we'll set the top to 50% because I want uh, those arrows to be aligned right in the middle. We'll add a transform trick, translate Y this time, it's fine, minus 50%. And let's set the left side to zero and let's give it a Z index of 10, just so uh, they're nice and visible right now. So we have these two icons inside a div with a class of swiper custom nav. And one thing we can do here is we can give that div a width of 100%. And if I add a background color of red, ah, you can see exactly what it's doing. And I can set a padding, zero, two rems, and that's gonna add uh, two rems of distance between the icon and the edge of the image. And now to place each icon where it belongs, I can simply do display flex on this container, 
and I can justify the content to be space between. That will basically push this other element to the right side of the container with the rest of the, um, the free space being placed between them. And that's really easy. It works even if the, uh, the container is resized. That's uh, the power of Flexbox. So now I can remove this background color and uh, work on these elements right here. So first of all, I need to make them work. For that, let's open up app.js. I'm gonna say navigation. Next element, I'm gonna set it to nav right. Here you can see why I used those IDs on the SVGs and previous element will be triggered by nav left. And that's all I need to do here. So now you'll see by clicking these, I can control the slider. Let's make them a little bit more interactive. If you remember from here, we have a little bit of uh, opacity added to them. So let's go back to our CSS and I'm gonna say swiper custom nav SVG. Let's add a pointer cursor to these. Let's set their opacity to 0.6 and Let's add a transition because I want to add a hover effect. So transition all 0.3 seconds, pretty standard, ease in and out. So now I'm going to say swiper custom nav SVG on hover. I'll simply change the opacity to one. So that adds a nice subtle effect to these buttons. Of course, you can go crazy. You can add click effects if that's what you want. But uh, for me, uh, I'm going to keep it simple. All right. So the images are displayed correctly. We have the location here at the bottom. And by the way, we can also um, navigate with, with the mouse like this. Uh, we have the navigation. All that's left now is the pagination right here on the bottom. Pagination, which uh, has to look something like this. So we have these uh, dots or dashes basically for each image in our slider. And then the active image or pagination bullet looks something like this. We're displaying the actual number and then the, uh, the dash is a little bit bigger and it's colored differently. So how do we do that? Well, it all starts right here in the JavaScript. Actually, no. I'm lying. It all starts uh, right here in the HTML, where I'm going to add a div with a class of swiper custom pagination. Okay, then we can go to the JavaScript. So in the JavaScript, we're going to say pagination. And we're going to pass in the following properties. We'll say the element that's going to hold the pagination controls, let's write it like this will be swiper two swiper custom pagination. It's the element that we just created. Then we want to make it clickable. And then to create custom bullets, we do the following render bullet function, we're going to pass in index and class name return. And we're going to return the following. So instead of uh, a traditional bullet point, we're going to return a div with a class of class name, so this will be generated by the script. And inside we have a span with a class of number that's going to take into account the index that's going to be passed to the function. And also another span with a class of line. All right, so now if we take a look, here are our custom bullets. But of course, we need to do some, uh, some heavy CSS modification to get them to look exactly how we want. So let's do that. Let's go back to CSS and I'll say swiper custom pagination. Let's display it in the middle of the swiper container, right? So we'll add a width of 100%. We'll set the display to flex and we'll justify the content to center. Okay. So that takes care of the alignment. Let's add a padding uh, top of two rems just to push it down a little bit. 
let's add a nice gap of one rem between each uh, bullet. And then let's add the necessary typography uh, properties like font family. That's going to be using my secondary font stack. Uh, the font size is going to be 17 pixels, line height 29 pixels, font weight is going to be 500 or medium, and let's set the color to my black variable. Cool. Now, in the state, it doesn't look anything like Uh, what we had in our design and I just noticed something. Yeah, so I can actually see the transition here when this element is displayed. So uh, we actually do need that overflow hidden that I initially added. Okay, so that's a lot better. Now, as I was saying, we can see these still look like bullet points and we can't see the text. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna go all the way down here under Swiper Custom Pagination and I'm gonna target the Swiper uh, Pagination Bullet. First of all, let's set the width and height to auto. Let's remove the border radius and let's remove the background color. We'll set it to transparent. Uh, let's set the opacity to one. Okay. And let's also align the text to the center, just like that. So now, yeah, we can see the actual numbers, but I only want to show uh, the number on the active slide. So let's set the opacity to, uh, to zero to hide it completely, or sorry, not not here, we need to target the uh, the actual number. So I'm going to say swiper custom pagination number, set the opacity to zero, and let's add a, a quick transition here, like so. And then we're going to say swiper custom pagination, and then we're going to target the active bullet, and then the number, and we're going to set the opacity to one. Okay, so now we can only see the number from the active slide. Pretty cool. What about the line? Well, let's target the line next. So let's actually duplicate this. Okay, the line, let's set the opacity from the start to 30%. Uh, let's set the height to 0.25 rems. Let's set the width to 0.75 rems. Okay, they're still not visible because we don't have a background color for it. So let's use our black variable here. It's still not showing. That's because that's a span element. So we need to make it a block element for it to have height, width, and so on. Uh, let's add a border radius. Four pixels should do the trick. And that should be it for the regular lines. Now the active line is a little bit different. So let's actually copy this. Uh, swiper custom pagination, swiper pagination bullet active. Uh, let's target the line here. Uh, let's add a width of two rems and also an opacity of one. And that should do the trick. All right, we're almost there. Uh, let's see how this looks like on smaller screens. So when I go small like this, we have a couple of issues. These uh, arrows are a little bit too big, but I think we'll just hide them because on small screens, on mobile screens, you'll be using your fingers to swipe uh, between the images. So let's go and do that. We'll say swipe or custom nav. We'll just hide it completely, display none. Okay, let's also make this, this box here uh, full width. So we'll say swiper slide fig caption. 
Uh, let's do left zero. Let's remove the transform. Let's set a width to 100%, like that. And let's also remove those uh, border radius or radiuses. Mm -hmm. And let's add a little bit of an opacity to the background color. So var black 90 should do the trick. So on smaller screens, we have a little bit of opacity in the background showing uh, just a tiny bit of the image uh, behind it. Now also on smaller screens, uh, I don't really need to see previews of the other images because the, the space is pretty limited, right? This is pointless right now. So uh, instead, on small screens, let's, uh, let's just show the image, the full image. And on large screens, we'll show the fractions like this. Mm, how do we do it? We go back to JavaScript. And here by default, we say slides per view one. Okay, so that means on small screens, we can see one image. But then we can use the breakpoints functionality in the slider. See, I told you it's a pretty awesome uh, slider. And we can say that, okay, at 1800, I want slides per view to be one and a half. And maybe, why not, at, uh, sorry, at 1400, I want three slides per view. So this allows us to change it like so, so that on small screens, it's just one image. And on larger screens, it's either one and a half or three slides. It really depends on the uh, available space. That is our second fully functional slider. And there you have it, two sliders created with Swiper JS, which is a fantastic uh, library and super easy to use. Now, uh, this course was based on a tutorial written by the amazing George Martsukos. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, so if you want to uh, see the written version of it, uh, go ahead and check out the link in the video description. With that said, thank you very much for watching this course. And don't forget to check out the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel, uh, channel to learn uh, more stuff like this, but also learn more about web design, web development, and a whole bunch of other things. I'm Adi, and until next time, take care.